Welcome back to Everything Fly Fishing. In this tying class, we are going to work with a really cool materials called Lively Legs. And at the below this video, you can find a place you can order these legs. They're cool. And we're killing them with these Lively Legs on the creek. So, stay tuned to this video and check these this fly out. You're going to want to check it out. And at any time you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're watching this on Facebook, don't forget, there's a down in there somewhere below this video. There's a little thing that says YouTube. Make sure you click that. Check out all other videos and subscribe. Or at the end of this video, there'll be a little link in the one corner down in here that you will click to subscribe. Make sure you subscribe. Helps us bring you contest. And, well, you, I'll get to that at the end. Anyway, on to the fly. To love the game Get on down to the roulette wheel And pray that the end comes and wheels And win its way And the hotel's not alive And the mystery's not the why Oh no and Silk is not the cry No, it's the love And it's the love Want to start this fly like we usually do by debarbing the hook, put the bead on, Now you're gonna pull the, put the bead on, turn the fl the hook back in the vise, and pull the bead all the way back to the back and get it ready to tie the antenna. On. Now we're gonna select an amber got goose by it for the antenna, and we're gonna tie one on each side. Starting with the side towards you, and we're gonna run it on the side of the hook. And when it gets up to the eyelet, it'll flare out. And then we're gonna tie the side on the me. And when it gets to the eyelet, it'll flare out. Then you want to wrap your thread all the way the back to them, goose bites, and whip finish it. And you'll see them goose bites are in a V, like an antenna sticking out the front. And then you're gonna push your gold bead back up to. All the way as far as it go. Now we're going to start our lead wire and we're going to wrap that up to the starting at about halfway the length of the hook and we're going to wrap it all the way up to the bead and then we'll just spin it kind of like a helicopter you just spin it like that and it'll break off and then take the one the the uh, spool of it in your hand and do the same thing and it'll break off real close. Now we're going to start the, the thread right back behind that lead and make like a little ramp so it's smooth transition from hook up to the lead and cover the some of the lead up with some thread wraps and then we are going to take that thread all the way back into the bend of the hook.
Now we're going to spin that hook around and put it in the vise so we can tie on the tail. Now we're going to select two more goose bites and F for the tail. And we're going to tie them on each side of the hook. The same as we did the front two, so they're in a V. Uh, I like to use the thicker, longer goose bites for the tail. And if you look at the, the ones at the top of the feather when you get goose bites, uh, they're shorter, skinnier. I use them for the antenna. Use the thicker ones down towards the bottom for the tail. And we're going to tie these on each side. Then we're going to cut these off right behind the lead. So that when you run your thread up, it'll go, it'll be solid body up through the lead. Now we're going to tie in our lead for our ribbing. I'm going to show you a little technique here. If you put the wire in that little clip on the side of the wire, it holds the wire so it doesn't fray out when it's in your box. If you stick that in there, now you take, I don't know, about six inches of that material out, then lock it in there. When you tie it in, when you get done tying this in, you'll be able to flop it back over your vise so it's out of the way. Hey, now you're going to head cement that. Now, I got yellow heads. That's because it's not as head cement. It's hard as nails. Yellow. What happens is my girlfriend throws her, once doesn't like the fingernail polish, I grab it. I have pink, purple. This is an idea for you guys. Now, if you watch my last Golden Stone video, this is different. We're going to use the whole dubbing for the whole fly. We're going to use the flash dubbing. And you can see we had Golden Stone, and that's the dubbing we're going to use. Now, I can't express to you enough how much I like to put little dubbing on. Wrap it and apply more. It makes your fly a lot more solid. I used to be the same person that would put all my dubbing on the thread and dub it forward and it was a huge mess. So, put a little bit of dubbing on. There's more thread. As you're applying that dubbing, there's more thread in the dubbing to hold it so it doesn't fray out or the fish pour it out. It makes a solider fly. Little dubbing, apply more, add it, apply more, add more dubbing and makes it way stronger fly. Very important. Now we're gonna whip finish this. Now we're going to trim all the really long hairs off this. There's a lot of guard, guy, guard hairs and stuff mixed in this dubbing. and We're going to trim all that off. Now, we're going to rib this a little different. A uh, few beginner fly tires who don't have a rotational vise. You can go back to my old video and see how we ribbed it in that. But for you to do, you kind of just hold your uh, wire down. And I kept it on the spool so I could hold that in my hand. 
and then just spin your vise and rib it out evenly till you get to the end then tie the wire off Now we're going to wrap the thread in front of the wire, in back of the wire, and then helicopter it and it'll break off. I recommend you do this instead of cutting it because it breaks it off closer. And you want to have that little piece that you couldn't get with the scissors. Turn that now we're going to turn the hook back around. And run the thread up to the bead and get ready for the fun part. Now we're going to tie down our nymph skin. We're going to cut this a oh, quarter inch to half an inch wide. I'm going to make a little strip of that and then you have to pull the paper off the back. This is white paper and then you can see almost through it. And then we're going to start to tie that in right behind the bead, right back to where the body had, we had stopped the body and tied off the wire. Yes, we want to make, and we want to make sure that nymph skin stays on the top of the hook. So if you want to spin it towards you again to make sure it's on very on top. You can do that. I like to do it, it makes it easier. Now, exactly how I have these lively legs is how we're gonna tie them in. And you'll notice there's a tab in front of the front legs and back of the back legs. And we're gonna tie it in using these tabs and then we're gonna cut them off. Now we ha tied the front legs in as close to the beat as we can, holding it by that tab. Then we're running our thread back, be right behind them, le the front legs. We run it back to right in front of the next set of legs, then right behind the next set of legs. And while you're doing all this, you want to make sure that that leg stay directly on top of the hook. So sometimes I'll spin. You see in this video, I'll spin the the fly with the eyelet and the hook facing away from me so I'm looking exactly at the top so that I make sure the legs and that stay on the top so you can spin the hook to you to make sure that them legs stay on top you get to the back one put a couple thread wraps behind the back legs pull up on them tabs make sure you're trying to stretch them tabs out when you cut them off they'll cut smoother off they'll be flush they won't have a little piece hanging out and do the same with the back legs. Now you're gonna add a little bit of that dubbing you had been using the whole time, just a little bit. And then you're gonna run your thread up behind the next set of legs or in front of the next set of legs and fold the nymph skin over now you want to kind of make like you want to fold it over and kind of flatten it down you want to make it so that the skin is almost square the fold is square it's not all rectangular or weird fold it over bring it up to the front of the, the next set the which would be the next set of legs and tie it down I tied it up to the f next set of legs, then I'm going to fold it back. You want to make sure you go up against the next set of legs so you don't have a gap. Fold it back and then tie it down again. Now your, your nip skin, you face your nip skin forward, tied it down, folded it back, tied it down again, and now your nip skin will be folding back. And you want to wrap thread wraps in there and fill that all in. Because then you're going to add, we can change our dubbing. Um, now we moved to the gill dubbing, which it's like an off-white, and you notice these 
these flies in the front have turned to white. If you pick one up and look at that and flip it over, the belly starts to get light and white towards the front of the fly. When you use that, you you dub it again, then you're folding them skin over, go to the next set of legs, tie it forward, bend it back, tie it back behind to the to the back set of legs. Don't leave no gap. Wrap your thread, fill it in, dub it again, fold it over again, and then you'll be right behind the bead where you whip finish it off. As you can see, as you tighten this fly, this procedure will make the wing case sit up like the natural fly. Each one will go up a little bit higher, and it'll separate the wing case by folding that skin back, and it'll make it bulkier there. It makes the wing case look more natural. Now we're gonna whip finish and don't that triple wing case look so cool. Looks so real. Um, once we whip finish this, then we're gonna pull back on that nymph skin, cut it off, and then uh, right here we'll give you a, a close up of this fly. It looks amazing. The detail in it and them lively legs uh, are amazing. Hey, welcome to the end of our video, and thank you for watching it all the way to the end. And this isn't a beautiful fly. It looks so amazing, and they've been working so well on Penn's Creek. And make sure you tie these up. If you're a beginner, they're really easy. Really, try give them a try. Um, they were tied on a size 8 bench shank hook, which really makes the fly really look neat looking when it's bent like that. And they really, really work. So tie some up. Now, go do it. <laughs> no. So when you go out to the water next time, make sure you have some of these in your box. They've been working. And I'm pretty sure the Yellowstones work pretty much all the way to the end of May. Uh, like I said in my videos, please subscribe. It helps us bring you more giveaways and discounts on products in the future. It's very important. Subscribers are very important to this channel. You're the ones that keep this channel going. So join our community of fly fishermen. And don't miss any of our upcoming videos. We've already posted two videos that if you're watching this on Facebook and you haven't subscribed yet, you missed. So go check them videos out and subscribe so you don't miss any more. And... Thank you very much if you already subscribed. Now, I hope you give this video a thumbs up if you like it anymore. 
and like I said, if you were ever watching this on Facebook, make sure you go down there below this video. Click the YouTube thing to check out more of our videos. And thank you very much. Hey, welcome to the very end of our video where you can see our fly tying videos here, our fishing videos here, a video just for you there, and subscribe there, which you do is very important to this channel. Subscribe. Keep your lines wet, out of the trees, and only give them fish a sore lip.